This time on pedal box, we put that steering rack, this anti-roll bar, into this chassis. And maybe we'll re-engineer something else, you know, on a whim. You know, because that's kind of our thing now. In the original subframe, the steering rack fit this way up, right up against the firewall about here. Now that's not very friendly for us because our steering wheel is way back that way and not very high. So we're going to have to tilt this back quite a lot to get a friendly angle for our steering linkages off the steering wheel. So we're going to tip it back about yay far. We've also got to lift it up a little bit. Now the reason we need to do that is our lower suspension arms at rest, which is roughly where the body is at the minute, actually droop ever so slightly. And we need the steering arms to be roughly parallel with them. If the lengths are any different, we get a similar behaviour to what we find with suspension arms of different lengths, where as the suspension travels, the end of one of them moves kind of in or out relative to the other, and it ends up adding additional steering angle to the wheel. So as the wheel compresses, it will also then tow in or tow out, which we don't really want. Now to hold the steering rack in place is going to be a fairly simple construction. We're going to run some pieces of box section from the front to the centre legs on the chassis here, and then we're going to run risers, just big triangular risers, up towards the top of the front of the body to match the angle of the foot plates here. We've got our frame tacked in now, so we can start looking at the brackets to actually mount this onto the side of our frame. We've got this raked back at about 55 degrees in the end, so it gives us a decent angle on the steering column into the passenger cell, and the brackets themselves will just sit on the inside edge of here. The arms want to sit parallel, so we need to have this approximately this high up. We will actually probably measure it, but for the time being, it's good enough. We'll get the tie rod ends back on so we can hold this in place and get a much better position and probably get some rope just to hold this round and up and in and take some measurements and see what we need to make. This is pretty much where the rack is going to live. It's a little bit off center at the moment, but we're going to make four brackets that we'll just weld onto the top of here, one for each hole on each side, get those in, and then we can mount this centered with those brackets, weld them in, and all will be well. With the brackets tacked in, that means that our rack is now bolted firmly to the chassis and the wheels no longer turn of their own accord, which is great news. The last part of the jigsaw we need to thread in is this, which we're going to tack around underneath here and build some brackets just to fit on the inside of the frame. Where exactly they're going to go, we don't know, because we haven't tested this yet, so that's going to be interesting. Well, that was a lot harder than we expected, but now we can attach this onto the lower arms and see where this lines up to on the frame. So, that there, and that there. Bugger. So that didn't fit. Unfortunately, it clashes with the lower arm on our suspension, which was always going to be a bit of a risk, we really wanted it to sit just high enough up, but we couldn't maths out having this in place, the steering in place, the brackets in place, the frame in place, and everything, and with any certainty. And frankly, the steering is more important than the location of this. So, we're going to try a few more positions and see if we can find something that works a little bit better. can mount the brackets onto the outside of this frame and then bolt these in and we get better bolt access to the top to fasten this in. So all in all, lucky. There is another way. If we mount this above the rack where we had it before, it makes all of this area very, very busy. And we haven't worked out exactly where our coilovers are gonna go. Obviously they're gonna have to come from here and go somewhere here, but that's about all we've got. If we mount this onto the front of the suspension, and have this all the way out here, we don't have to go out of our way to build anything extra. We still need to mount the lights, the bumpers, the radiator, and everything else further forward of here. 
So we still need to build structure and we don't go out of our way to build anything unnecessarily, but it does simplify our life. We could have got some slightly longer drop links of something else, made them fit and used them, but we'd have to find what we need really in an ideal situation, which isn't going to be easy without building our brackets. And then we might still have to change them anyway. We then have to source something and it just becomes an awful lot of laborious work. And we have to still go out of our way to get more things. Doing it this way, we manage to use all of the original parts. We don't cause ourselves any part headaches to source things in the future. And it's still going to work in exactly the same manner and make our lives simpler. So that's probably what we're going to do. It also means we don't have to do it right now, which is even better. While we've got the anti-roll bar mounted out front, as Aid showed a second ago, we can demonstrate the problem with the geometry that he mentioned having it attached above the steering rack. The basic issue is that the drop link pivot here is mounted a long way below the body pivot here. So as the suspension arm compresses, this actually needs to move back as it rotates around this pivot. So the drop link needs to bend, basically, that way to meet this joint moving up. And the drop link isn't designed to do that, it's a hard piece of plastic, so that's not great for it. Now what you really want with your anti-roll bar linkages is for your pivot point on the body and the pivot point on the drop link to be level with each other, or as close as you can get. So if we lower this down a bit here, you can see as the suspension compresses, that point is only going to move up on the radius of the arm, rather than trying to move up and in, so that's really friendly. Now, there is a little bit of margin for error here. You can go a little bit lower, which a lot of manufacturers do because it gives you easier access from underneath. You can go a little bit higher, but there's not really many good reasons to do that usually. We're probably going to go lower just to get around the radiator and things, but we can at least get a lot closer this way around than we could if it was mounted above the power steering rack. Since we're not worrying about the anti-roll bar right now, we're just going to get back to the power steering rack for a second. This is tacked in in place and the alignment all looks pretty good on our steering arms, so we're going to stitch that in and get that solid and get the mounts tidied up. We're then going to cap off over the tops of here on our support braces, just because they're a bit ugly where we've got open tube ends in there. We're also going to tweak our upper arm brackets around a bit. You can see on the front one here we've got a big alignment problem where the front edge of our arm comes back quite far. It causes the hind joint to catch while it articulates, and the rear joint is just a bit too far back. Now I reckon, as we lean the front bracket backwards, it will actually bring the rear joint into alignment, but we'll figure that out as we go along. We put these tubes in a couple of weeks ago now, and being the UK, it's rained. So these are quite full of damp and moisture. Now we don't want to repeat on here of what's happened to a lot of the chassis tubes that we're going to be cutting out shortly, where they end up full of rust, rotting from the inside out with all the water sealed up in them. And because we're about to cap them off and fully enclose them, we think it's probably a good idea to first heat them up with a blowtorch and drive out as much of that moisture as we can. Just make sure they're dry, and then they should last quite a while. So you've got these little triangular gussets that we're putting in here. Uh, they're not for anything structural, just to close in the ends of the tube so they don't get too full of rain or anything else. Now in order to do the underside of these tubes, we could have taken the engine out and we could have flipped the chassis. But that seems like an awful lot more work than just putting the engine crane on the front of the car and lifting it up to near Stubby Bob levels of angle. If you haven't seen Stubby Bob Wheelie, go watch Stubby Bob Wheelie. And we'll do this. We won't be long. So one thing we haven't done until now is closed in the back of this mount. We don't want to close it in fully because it will create a pocket under here that gets full of rubbish. But we do want it closed in so that anything that gets kicked up this way doesn't come further in here and fill up the back of the car. So we've got these two little plates that we're going to weld in, one this side and one the other side, that will just close it off so anything that comes in will drop down into the bottom of the car. The last thing we're going to do before we put the body back down again, while it's up in the air, we're going to take these firewall panels out, just because it's a little bit easier to get into some of these rivets. Ah, sorry. that was my face. Now we've got it back on the ground again. We're going to take this back bracket off so that we can bend the front one round and then do the same on the other side so we can line them up so they fit into the rear brackets properly. We just tweaked this bracket backwards a little bit from where it was so it's in line with the front of the chassis now. Originally it swept forwards ever so slightly which was giving the interference on our suspension arm. So the rear bracket, now we've cleaned it up, fits on the back of here nicely. We can weld that back in. We've got all of our washers in the back, 
everything fits nicely and the arm moves as it should. It's been a pretty good day today. We've adjusted our suspension brackets so we can now get all of our range of motion that we need on the upper arms with no interference. We've got our steering rack uh, mounts fully welded in. Yep, we've finished off the tops as well so that they're all sealed and we're not going to hopefully get a load of water in them. We've taken out our firewall panels which were a little bit rubbish but we need them out because we need to fix a few things down here and we finished off our lower joints as well. So all we need to do is put the rest of our suspension back together and then maybe next time we'll actually get some springs in and this will be done. Yeah, we're actually getting pretty close to done with the front end of the chassis now, so before too long we'll be looking at interesting things like getting all the steering wheel in and actually starting to make it work as a car. Yeah, that's going to be, again, kind of terrifying.